Now let us look at the term demagnetization. Demagnetization simply means a process by which a magnet loses its magnetism. So if you have a magnet with its magnetism and then you ensure that it loses its magnetism, the process of you doing that is what we call demagnetization. So demagnetization is a process by which a magnet loses its magnetism. There are three ways of doing that. If you want a magnet to lose its magnetism. So when somebody says, mention three ways by which a magnet can be demagnetized. So they are asking you, tell us three ways in which a magnet can lose its magnetism. One, by heating. You see, you can heat. That is a heating. There is a hammering. You keep on hammering. Then there is also using current. That is alternating current. Now be careful with the current. When you use a direct current, direct current is used for magnetizing. But alternating current is used for demagnetizing. So these are the three ways. If you want a magnet to lose, it is a magnetism. Let us look at them one by one. That is the next question. Explain how a magnet can be demagnetized. Remember using the three ways. And here we are starting with the heating. Is it true that when you heat a magnet, it loses magnetism? Yes. So we are saying, if you are doing, if you want to use the approach of heating, what do you do? The first statement says, the magnet is heated to red hot. That means you get your magnet, you put in a fire, and then you heat it until it becomes red hot. And then you place it in east to west direction. So the magnet is heated to red hot and placed in east to west direction. Then after that, we have to explain how does heat affect the magnet? Heat will always affect the arrangement of the dipoles. Remember, in a magnet, all the dipoles are facing the same direction. So when you heat, the heat will cause those molecular magnets, which we call dipoles, to vibrate. And when they are vibrating, they vibrate in different what? directions. And by the time you finish up with your experiment, you realize that all the dipoles are now facing different directions. The heat has caused the dipoles to vibrate vigorously in different directions, and now they are facing different directions. They are no longer in one direction. Once they face different directions, then you have already demagnetized the magnet because you have destroyed the arrangement of the dipoles. So we are saying the magnet is heated to red hot and then placed in east-west direction. So the first thing you heat it. Heating causes the dipoles of a magnet to vibrate vigorously in different directions. Thus the order of the dipoles is destroyed. You see? Once you heat Heat will cause the dipoles to vibrate in different directions and then the order of the dipoles will be disorganized. Once the order of the dipoles has been disorganized, then you have demagnetized that magnet. The second way is by hammering. If you keep on hammering a magnet or dropping it violently, what will hammering do or dropping? Once you hammer a magnet, Hammering will also make the dipoles also vibrate. The same story. Vibrating in such a way that they will be vibrating in different directions and it will disorganize the arrangement of the dipoles. So we are saying hammering or dropping a magnet sets the dipoles into vibration and their order destroyed. As simple as that. So hammering and heating, the same explanation. They make the, the arrangement, they, they make the dipoles vibrate, that's the first thing. And when they are vibrating, they are vibrating in different directions. And finally, they will make ensure that the order of the dipoles is disorganized. Once the dipoles face different directions, it means that magnet has already been demagnetized. The third method of demagnetizing a magnet is by using alternating current, you see, using alternating current. 
So in the same way, you need a solenoid. I remember when we were talking about magnetizing using current, we also talked about a solenoid. So you bring your solenoid, you see, this is a solenoid. It has a hole inside here. And then you have wires, these are copper wires, moving around it. And these wires are connected. This one is connected, this one is also connected to the source of current. This time we are using AC, AC supply. AC means alternating current. So what you do, you get your magnet, you see, this is a magnet. We have drawn using red, I mean green. You see, this is a magnet with the north and south. So what you do, you get your magnet, put it inside a solenoid, push it inside the solenoid. Then after that, you switch on the current. So what happens? Within a short time, when you remove this magnet, you see this word? The magnet removed in east to west direction. So you remove it when it is facing east to west direction. By that, so you put your magnet inside the solenoid, then you switch on the current. Then after a short time, you remove the magnet. And when you remove the magnet, you go and test it. You will find that this magnet has already lost all it is a magnetism. And if it has lost all it is magnetism, it means it has been demagnetized. Is that okay? It has been demagnetized. So putting it in words, we are saying the magnet is placed inside a solenoid. So you put your magnet inside a solenoid and the alternating current switched on. The magnet is then removed in east to west direction when alternating current is still flowing so the current is still flowing but you remove the magnet but you make sure when you are removing it you remove it when it is in east to west direction so what does this alternating current how does alternating current demagnetize the magnet that is the next statement ac that is alternating current makes the dipoles vibrate vigorously and their order destroy so when you switch on the current what does the current do the alternating current will make sure that these dipoles vibrate in different directions and their order is destroyed so by the time you remove on removing and testing you realize that the magnet is found to be demagnetized so the alternating current will ensure that the dipoles vibrate vigorously in different directions and destroys it is their order and their order destroyed so alternating current makes the dipoles vibrate vigorously in different directions and their order destroyed so by the time you remove on removing and testing the magnet you will find that the magnet is already demagnetized so that is the third way of demagnetizing a magnet Now, the next thing we are going to look at is magnetic shielding. Magnetic shielding is also called magnetic screening. You see? So you either call it magnetic shielding or magnetic screening. This word shielding comes from the word shield. Uh, when you look at the coat of arms of Uganda, you will find the word shield. You will see a shield there. To shield is to protect. So when we say magnetic shielding, it means you are protecting magnetic fields. You don't want magnetic fields to pass somewhere. So what is magnetic shielding? Define magnetic shielding. It is the blocking of magnetic fields. It is a blocking of magnetic fields. If you don't want magnetic fields to pass somewhere, then that is what we call, that process we call magnetic shielding. The blocking of magnetic what? Fields. How can you do that? The next question. With the aid of a diagram, explain the term magnetic shielding. How do you block something from magnetic fields? So what we do, we get two bar magnets. This is one, this is another one. You see, north, south, that's one magnet. North, south, that's another one. So you bring these two magnets, but you make sure that you bring them in such a way that their poles are unlike you see north and south then in the middle here of course when you bring in north and south you expect the magnetic field to be moving from north towards what south 
Then between the magnetic field here, you bring what we call what? Ion ring. You see? An ion ring. It has a hole inside. So you put it in, in between the north and south. So what happens? Immediately you bring this ion ring. The magnetic fields, they will begin. You see these green lines? These green ones. Those are the magnetic fields. They are moving from north going to south. You will find that they will be passing through the ion ring. They crowd through the ion ring, but they will not pass inside here. When you are drawing this diagram, make sure that the magnetic field does not pass here because research has shown that there is no magnetic field which passes here. How do you know that there is no magnetic field passing here? You bring what we call a plotting compass, a compass needle. When you bring a plotting compass and you put it inside here, that needle will not deflect. You know, it will not change direction. It will not deflect. And you know, when you bring a compass needle here and then it deflects, it means the magnetic field is what? Moving. But if it does not deflect, it's telling you that there is no magnetic field inside here. So what does that mean? It means this ion ring has protected this place from being attacked by the magnetic field. They come like this. Instead of passing here, they pass the other side. They pass the other side. Even these ones pass down. So the space inside here has been protected, has been shielded. That's where this word comes from, magnetic shielding. The space here has been what? Shielded. So we are saying an ion ring is placed between two magnets with opposite poles near each other. So you make sure that you bring an ion ring, place it between two magnets with opposite poles. Opposite means north and south. Then after that, as I said, you bring a compass, what? Needle, a floating compass. You place it inside. So a compass needle is placed inside the iron ring. And what will you see? This compass needle does not deflect. And if it doesn't deflect, it is telling you that the space inside, this shows that the space inside the soft iron ring is protected. It is protected from magnetic fields, so it is not affected by magnetic fields. And that process, the blocking, this blocking of magnetic fields is what we call magnetic screening. You either call it magnetic screening or magnetic shielding. So the next thing we are going to look at is application of magnetic shielding. Where do you use magnetic shielding? state one practical application of magnetic shielding and we are saying magnetic shielding is used to protect delicate instruments which are easily affected by magnetic fields so if you have a delicate instrument an instrument which can be affected by magnetic field and you want to protect that instrument so that magnetic fields do not destroy it then what you do, you do what they call magnetic shielding. You simply get it, put it inside an iron ring, and then you put that iron ring between two bar magnets with their north poles, north and south poles facing each other, as I already explained. So magnetic shielding is used to protect delicate instruments which can easily be affected by magnetic fields.